drop your brushes because Reddit was holding a painting competition and they asked me to judge all of the entries. I still can barely believe that this is painted, which again is really good. Wait a second. This is almost too good to be true. Okay, so we got tricked. Yeah, if you could have painted that, you'd be the instant winner of this competition, I'd say, even without seeing the <laughs> intermediate and, and advanced pieces. So see, now I almost don't want to judge this anymore. You probably achieved the opposite effect than you wanted to achieve. Sponsored by NordVPN. What's up, pigment pushers? R slash miniature painting, the, to my knowledge, biggest miniature painting related subreddit, was holding a painting competition. And of course, they needed some judges for the entries. So here we are. I already shot this video once. So this is take two. The problem is, if you're regular on this channel, then you know that I want to give everyone as much info about why I rated their piece the way I did. And also, wanted to give a bunch of feedback, but that resulted in two hours of feedback after the first two categories. And that just didn't make sense. So I went through everything by myself off camera and I'll just give the bullet points of what I had to say in order to keep this video interesting. And if you have an entry in the slot and you have additional questions, feel free to reach out, but it would just not make sense to have a six hour video. So as far as the competition goes, this time they gave a bit of a manual on what would be judged. I'm a bit torn about this. As a judge, I feel boxed in because it pushes me to work on a checklist, to use a checklist to rate a creative piece. And I might rate one of these criteria higher than the other in general, where here they look like three equally weighted criteria. I would especially rate things that would factor into composition higher in beginner pieces, for example, than say execution, simply because I know that blending and consistent paint application is just about the hardest thing to do in miniature painting, especially for beginners. For the painters that enter, I feel it's a bit of a dull-edged sword because on one hand, it gives a good overview to beginners for what we are looking for in a good miniature. So this list basically raises the awareness that all of these things exist and a new painter might not even have heard of 90% of these factors. At the same time, it creates a bit of an expectation that if only you checked all of these boxes, your entry should really do well. So I won't lie, I had a bit of a rough time compiling my way of painting and this list into a concept that works but I tried my hardest, but I can understand why they chose this approach because if you're doing a painting competition, you want to make it as fair and transparent as you can. I just personally think no single painting competition can be 100% fair because even though we can try to make all criteria objective and quantifiable, we are still looking at someone's creation. And that creation can and will be viewed subjectively by each of the individual judges. And that's why to counterbalance, there are a handful of judges and not just one. I'll not go through all of the criteria. I'll put them on screen now and you can read them and just be aware that I try to stick to them as much as possible, but I weighted them according to my own experience as a judge in other competitions through the years. So let's start with the finalists of the beginner entries. So this category was called beginner single figure or small format, which basically means there's one figure on a base or one figure on a show base. And the first miniature is this little necromancer uh, walking through a graveyard. And my bullet points were that composition wise, I really like it. The tombstone in the back is a nice feature and the pumpkins in the front and the tombstone behind it, they create a bit of three dimensionality. So just like I have the light back here and the brushes here in the front, it creates a bit of a three dimensional view of this room. And the same thing happens on this figure. So the composition, even though very simple, works nicely. The only complaint I have with the base is that you have the tombstone feature in the back and the pumpkins and the skulls in the front. And then around that, you have just a bit of gravel that's uh, colored the same, and it has yeah just about the same consistency all over the place. So it looks a bit boring. So what you could have done is add some connectors to the base, as in 
features like grass tufts or a bit of a different texture on the base in between those areas to connect everything together. I really liked how one part of the skull was highlighted a bit different than the rest. So this creates a bit of a feeling of light shining uh, under the hood and this being a bit more pronounced by light. Whether or not it was an accident, it's still looking really nice. Overall, I think an aid for this composition works pretty nicely. As far as execution goes, I always need to look at the list on the second monitor because I keep forgetting what's on it. As far as execution goes, I couldn't see any mold lines or similar. The lines on the lantern were a bit sloppy. They had some shaking in it. And I feel like there was a bit of an inconsistency in the highlights. So some highlights are a lot brighter than others. And there's a couple of lines where there should be more of a transition. So I give it a seven, mostly because of these inconsistencies. As far as palette goes, it's kind of hard to paint an interesting purple. And I think you did a good job with shading uh, the purple more than highlighting it. That way it doesn't turn into this candy colored finish. One thing I wasn't super happy about was the glossy finish on everything. What happens when you have a glossy finish is that you get these artificial highlights and it distracts the viewer from what you try to paint on it. So that also influenced my judgment on this a bit and I gave it a seven. To fix this, you can just use a bit of matte varnish at the end to draw everything together and to showcase what you have been painting um, without having these artificial highlights that distract the viewer. Overall, you could have brought a bit more color into the base. So for example, the tombstone is just gray, the gravel is just gray. Having a bit more variety there would have netted extra points. I've had a bit of a problem judging this because there's a couple of, because there's a couple of problems with it. And I don't want to sound too harsh, but a lot of things felt unfinished. So for example, you started the highlighting process, but you left some of that um, detail between his eyes unpainted. So nothing's really highlighted there beyond what seems to be like a contrast paint. I would have liked to see highlights on there too with the green maybe. One trick that I usually do is I sit in front of the picture and then I close my eyes and then I open them up and I see what catches my eye. And while the eyes definitely draw your eye, the teeth kind of compete for that. So you're unsure where to look first. And then all of the rest is, there wasn't really a plan what to do, right? So where is the light source? Not everything's highlighted consistently. So overall, I give the composition a six. I think you had a good idea as far as colors go. So I like how the colors interact. Everything's just too unfinished and too rough. So you can see all the brush strokes. Doing layering as a beginner is a valid strategy. And I know that the blending is really hard in the beginning, but again, the interaction with some features not painted at all makes for the feeling that you, again, didn't have a lot of a plan. And then on top of that, you have uh, the greens highlighted with a brighter green. Sometimes you have the greens highlighted with a yellow, and sometimes you have it highlighted with this beige color. And one other thing that I don't quite understand is what's going on with the yellow. So it seems like you wanted to go for an OSL effect, but the eyes are orange and then the OSL is basically yellow. So when you're doing OSL, you need to establish the same color around the source of light as the source has. So in this case, you should have probably went for a bit more of an orange glow and then you could have gone brighter in the areas that are close to the light source. So all of that drags it down a bit and I give the execution a five. And again, I know it's beginner, but just more consistency and more deliberate application of paint, just having a bit of a plan would have raised the score a lot. As far as palette goes, I really like the colors. So going from a dark turquoise into a green and yellow. So all of these colors interact really nicely. So I don't have a lot of complaint there. I'd give it a strong eight. Next up, we have this diorama and I need to censor a few parts because there is uh, boobies and nips in there. So I'll leave a link to the uncensored picture, but on screen, I will censor this. So this piece is telling a definite story. So there is a good story in this. However, I feel like there is just too much going on on the base. To tell the story of the figure, you don't need all of that stuff in the back. It's kind of distracting. The wall in the back is not contributing. Just tell your story with the miniature and don't, don't add any additional distraction. So that way it's a bit busy and we don't quite know where to look. And therefore I give it a six. 
execution wise, I was a bit torn what to give it because there's parts that are really nice, especially the parts with the bodies just barely reaching out of the blood and the blood running off of the bodies. Um, your technique lended itself pretty nicely to this. On other parts, it looks a bit unrefined. So I know that white is really, really hard to paint, but in some areas you can clearly see the washes where the wash is accumulated. So that's why I always recommend even to beginners not to rely too much on washes. And like I said, while they work really nicely on the body, on the white it betrayed you a bit. And then there is um, areas where that look a bit unfinished, like the necklace, the gold necklace. You don't necessarily have any distinction there. Uh, the white goes directly into the gold. And then there is some parts like uh, the face. It's, it's kind of hard to tell because the pictures are not from an ideal angle, but it looks washed out and just one color. And then there's a lot of dry brushing going on in the other features. And dry brushing is not necessarily bad, but you hit a few spots up there and then some of them are just pure purple. So that doesn't really create the contrast you were aiming for. It's just dry brushed up a few value steps, but you would have also benefited from shading all of this purple a bit. So I give the execution a six. And as far as the palette goes, I don't really have a complaint. The white kind of works really nicely with being red on the inside and you know covering up in a bit of an innocent way all of this carnage below. And then you only have the red and the purple in there and a bit of blue. So all of these colors go nicely with the white main color. So I don't really have a complaint. It's solid, but nothing really takes my breath away. So I give it a seven. So this flesh and bone golem, I give the composition a seven. I wanted to give it a six because it's kind of straightforward where the, the muscles go, there's clear texture in the sculpt and where the bone goes. But the base, even though it's not necessarily distinguished, you could have added a bit of rust texture and so on. It adds a bit of a story. Like I can imagine this one being an experiment that broke out of its cage in a laboratory and now it's rampaging through and looking for victims. As far as execution goes, I give it a five simply because you can still see a lot of the mold lines. And don't get me wrong, I might have a bit of a problem with mold lines in general if you have been watching my channel. But the thing is, you're investing so much time into painting these puppets that you should probably invest the 20 minutes or half an hour or even an hour more into cleaning them up before. And I know that it's not super practical usually for armies to get rid of every mold line. But if you're competing in a painting competition, this just sets you back before you even put paint on. And the problem is it's jumping out right at you, mostly because it creates an edge and light artificially reflects off of there. Just like with uh, a glossy finish, you have an additional highlight that shouldn't be there. Another thing that I have a bit of a problem with is if you're using a senatal highlight, a spray from above and you have these black shadows and then you're using this to create shadows. So basically you can still see the dotted texture of your uh, base coat spray. And then in the recesses, for example, that texture jumps out at me. Again, for army painting, I feel like this is a totally valid strategy simply because it's really quick and you can do a lot with this pre-shading. But if it's a painting competition, just take the additional time, try to show that you can paint, try to show that you can shade with a brush. It also just simply looks better and more realistic and more credible. As far as palette goes and color choice, you added a bit of purple and you added a bit of skin tone for the highlights. You definitely thought about variation for the flesh parts. And there's a lot of pink and a lot of skin tones in there. So I gave that part a seven. So this Wraith is an entry I really like. It draws your attention immediately especially because of the OSL in the middle. I'm not an OSL fan, but this one here works really good. I always say if you're painting OSL, try to mute everything around it and make the OSL the star of the story. And you did that in this case. The other option to work with OSL is to make it really subtle. I gave the composition a 10. I really like especially the way that the OSL integrates with the base and the skeleton coming out of the water and the green integrating almost tells a story of this magical thing running off of him into the water and reviving the skeleton. As far as execution goes, I had one problem, just like we mentioned before, the OSL source. 
and the light don't quite match in hue. So the source is a bit more green than the rest. And I really like some placement of these colors, like on the skull, for example. But overall, it just throws me off a bit that the hues are so different. So I would have used a bit more yellowish green on the actual hourglass to fit with the rest of the, of the light that's emitting from it. And then I think I can see a mold line on the shoulder, so that drags it down a bit. And here and there, I would have loved to see a bit more blending, or at least trying to blend. On the backside, especially, you can see all of these white brush strokes. I'm not sure if it fits. It doesn't create anything like texture. It just looks rough and unrefined, to me at least. Again, because the palette works, you went for really muted colors even on the metals, you went for this copper that's yeah shaded or um, weathered with some verdigree. So all of this works nicely together and it lets the, the greens shine. So I gave the palette a nine. I feel a piece like this is a really good way to impress people when you're starting out. So focusing on storytelling instead of just getting caught up in trying to chase the perfect blend. The next category is beginner multiple figures or large format. Hey, this is future Chris. And before I let past Chris take you new the next category, let me quickly thank this sponsor's video. What? Let me thank this video's sponsor, NordVPN. Why would you care about a VPN? I hear you say, well, you should if you value privacy, if you don't like regional content and censorship, and if you want to protect your devices at home and while traveling. And if you haven't got one yet, I have a really great offer for you from NordVPN, the most highly regarded VPN solution in the industry. With just one subscription, you can install it on up to six devices and it's really easy to use. You can connect with just one click and there's over 5,000 servers in over 60 countries available. So you're guaranteed to find the perfect solution for your needs. And the best thing is NordVPN encrypts all your traffic so your private information is safe from malicious third parties. Countries can censor information based on your location anymore. Personally, I hate nothing more than paying for Netflix and only being able to see a fraction of the shows that are available just because I'm in the wrong country. Not only can you unlock previously unattainable geo-locked content on streaming services and on YouTube, you can also do the opposite and stay at home virtually to retain access to your regional subscriptions while you're traveling. Finally, I can watch Wyma Plus from everywhere. Yes. So don't miss out on this offer. Go to nordvpn.com slash Traverian to get a two year plan with a huge discount plus one additional month for free. November Cyber Month, so the discount is even bigger. And the best thing is if you get a NordVPN subscription, through my link, you are also supporting this channel in the process. Why not give it a try? And the first entry is this Necromancer diorama. And I found it really amazing. I gave the composition an eight and let me explain why. The first thing that catches my eye is the way that the muddy water works in the front and how the zombies come out of it. Uh, that part is would be a 10 if it was standing on its own. If it just had the necromancer standing at the shore with just a tiny bit of the screen, I would have given this a 10. Unfortunately, I feel like everything's a bit too long and I understand what you were trying to do. So you're trying to show this necromancer that is raising an army, so you needed all that space for the skeletons to come out also. But in general, I just like dioramas that are a bit more compact. So maybe you could have made the base a bit smaller and, and told the story in a bit more of a confined space. It's, it's showing a bit in the pictures. It, it was hard to photograph that. And in my opinion, that's always a hint that something just is too large. So the, the story could have probably been told on less space in a more confined and precise way. One other thing that distracted me a bit, everything looks super realistic and the colors work nicely together. The banner kind of throws me off. So it feels like artificially placed, especially with the more comic-ish freehand on there. Again, don't get me wrong, it's not bad or anything. I just think it doesn't fit all that well. So overall, I gave the composition an eight. It's a really strong eight. As far as execution goes, especially for a beginner, everything is really nicely executed the resin water, the grass looks is also rather credible and the painting itself 
is pleasing too. So you try to go for lights and shadows. Only here and there, for example, on the skull, you have a few shadows that are too deep. But overall, I really like it and I gave it a 9. As far as the palette goes, I gave it an 8, really strong 8. So this entry works really nice from a compositional standpoint. You have the left figure that has light coming from above and shining downwards. And on the right side, you have um, light that's coming from below. Both the colors are complementary contrasts. So you have really strong entry as far as this goes. Unfortunately, the execution is not as good as the composition. And we're not just talking about slightly dirty gradients. The green in some places is just one color applied over gray. We've been talking about this for OSL. You kind of need to build a darker version of the color. And then on top of that, build these really bright reflections the closer you get to the source. The layers on the back side are also kind of rough. All in all, there is still a lot of improvement here. So I gave this execution a five and I gave the palette a nine because the colors work really nicely together. Again, it's a complementary contrast and everything just fits perfectly. So keep doing what you're doing. If your ideas stay as strong as this, once you get the practice, you're also going to improve on the executional level. You're really on a good way. So this diorama where a biggest snail is chasing the smaller snail heads uh, is really something different. And that's always good. As I was looking at it, I felt like the composition could have been better. I'm kind of lacking an angle that has been the designated viewing angle. And I think if you put everything in a more confined space, so you had maybe the two snails in the front, like one of them shooting off like this and the other one like this. And then where my head is, you have mama snail and you sloped everything up slightly. You could have again condensed uh, this base and the star Rama a bit more and it would have been more impactful this way. I don't necessarily like these drawn out flat or relatively flat bases for dioramas. Just try to do something with the angles, you know, the viewing angle and also the angles within the diorama. But overall, I really like the story. It's a really crazy story to tell. It's something new and interesting. So I give it an eight. As far as execution goes, I would have maybe wanted a bit more of crazy intense colors. You started off with these intense oranges and purples, and I would have maybe made those a bit stronger. As far as the base goes, at first I didn't realize that this is supposed to play out underwater, but since you, went for these muted greens and everything's kind of the same. It dawned on me that maybe there's a body of water over this and uh, everything's, all the colors are a bit more muted. And I really like that. As far as execution goes, I give it an eight. I didn't really see anything that threw me off, but there also wasn't anything that made me go, wow, amazing, but really solid. So I also gave the execution an eight. And I also gave the palette an eight because again, I feel like the color choices work and overall this is a really solid and interesting piece okay for this entry i need to show you some footage from the first video okay so zooming in we see that uh, there's a lot of really nice osl going on i still can barely believe that this is painted which again is really good yeah i really like that the osl works it's also smooth the application is smooth and i really really like the way that the lava sword looks Wait a second, this is almost too good to be true. Let's read up. Oh, it's it's right here. I used a, a small LED light to help give a flare-like effect. Um, okay, so we got tricked. Yeah, if you could have painted that, um, you'd be the instant winner of this competition, I'd say, even without seeing the <laughs> intermediate and, and advanced pieces. So looking at just what is painted, I'll be super honest. I'm not a fan of cell shading. I know that it's really popular, and I'm not going to try to vote something down just because I don't like it. So I try to be objective about it, but I want to say that I don't necessarily like the approach just to be transparent. So trying to judge the objective things, I feel like the composition, and we talked about it before, benefits a lot from having you know a an angle or multiple angles in it. So the distribution of the figures works really nicely and uh, it creates depth. I just feel like because the big demon is just the same color overall, the eye doesn't really catch on to something. Um, so he's gray, below that you have gray, 
And if I do my eye trick, what I really get drawn to is, for example, the green in the lower uh, right and maybe the red demon. So I don't really look at the large demon. Maybe the sword draws my eye a bit, but I would have maybe tried to draw the attention to the face of the demon so that I can realize, okay, that's the one piece, the centerpiece by, you know, creating maybe the the head area and the chest area, making that a bit brighter and then everything around it a bit darker. And I'm not a fan of chromatic colors or figures that are completely painted in chromatic colors. Again, I know that it's probably due to the cell shading and it has been a deliberate choice, but it makes everything tricky to balance uh, and to compose. So overall, I gave the composition a seven. There's strong points, but there's also objectively, I want to say a lot of points that drag it down. As far as execution goes, again, I'm not a fan of cell shading, but there is areas that are done really nicely, like the skeleton parts. I'm not hundred percent sure about the red demon, for example, and there's inconsistencies in the purple demon. If you look at the wings, and there's also some inconsistencies on the large demon as far as execution goes. And I already mentioned a couple of palette choices. So I give the execution a seven and the palette a six. This entry had a lot of potential and I really like it. It just suffers from the same thing, right? There's a large drawn out base and that creates not enough drama. So if we look at it from this angle, in my opinion, if you got rid of this slope here and just left this part and then made the backside also curved like this, or maybe just go up a bit and left out the pipe completely because I feel like the pipe doesn't necessarily add anything because of this round feature here. I kind of know that you're setting this piece in, in a sewer and she fled down there and he's chasing her. Again, because the base is really flat, there's no forced viewing angle, but with slight modifications, I think this could have been a really impactful piece. Another thing that if you have something that has a lot of gray tones on it, uh, don't choose a gray background. I think this piece would have worked really nicely with a black background. So overall, I gave the composition a seven. As far as execution goes, because everything looks really gray, it's hard to tell what you did there. I feel like you covered a nice armor color up with too much verdigris. So it also got gray. And again, it could be a stylistic choice. So because this thing maybe lives in the sewers, it kind of looks like the sewers, but I can't really make out features. There's a lot more potential if you worked a bit more on readability and contrasts. And also there is a few parts on, for example, the dress where you are not clearly distinguishing the white parts from the purple parts. So small things like these, drag it down a bit. And I gave the execution a six. As far as palette goes, same problem. I also gave it a six. Everything's just too gray. Next up, we have intermediate single figure or small format. Again, single figures. And the first entry is this witch on a pumpkin. So I like how the pathway kind of bends with the magic character and it reacts to what's going on on top of it. And I also like the galaxies and stars that are going on in the hat. I gave the composition an eight overall. As far as the execution goes, there are some parts that should have maybe been highlighted. It would have been an interesting idea to edge highlight all of the, the bricks. If we look at the green parts, there's a lot of rougher painting. I don't know if that was deliberate or not. It's kind of hard to tell because it's not super consistent. And some parts on the cats, I know that black is really hard to paint, but some of those parts look rather inconsistent. I'm not sure if you went for a fur texture or if the blending is not um, smooth enough. That said, I really like the blends on the pumpkin and I like how you created the illusion of galaxies and stars in the hat and how you used stippling for that. That is really nice. So overall, I gave it a seven. If I don't count the pumpkin, everything else is just slightly slightly off in, in the way you use your, your brushwork. As far as palette goes, I feel like all the colors work together nicely. You have the really bright pumpkin. I really, really like how the purple looks in front of the orange. And then you have everything distinguished by the green parts. Yeah, I just think it works and I give it an eight. So this guy from Cursed City, I had a bit of a problem with the composition. The reason why I have a problem is that everything is 
uh, brown gray and then we have two features that are really standing out which is the clothing and whatever he has over his eyes those are red and they pop out and i don't understand why why should the focus be on exactly those two things so it's just a slight unfortunate color choice i give the composition a six because of this but the execution is really nice i like how you have the senator light catching onto the shoulders and everything that's further up is a bit brighter and i also like how you probably used washes or contrast paints on the wooden parts but they still look nice and uh, refined and just everything is kind of textured i like how the shovel has a different texture from the bones and all of that uh, is really well executed there's a couple of things if you look at the back why is the the triceps not lit for example so small inconsistencies in the highlighting but other than that really well executed again i feel like the color choice just doesn't work 100 percent i don't necessarily have a solution but we always got to think if the viewer is getting the stories we want to tell. For the palette, I gave it a seven. So the composition on this lady Olindra on first sight works really well. You have the cloth part over her face that's drawing a lot of attention. And then as we go down, everything gets darker and the attention is really drawn to her face. And then the benches left and right uh, are kind of muted and just have like small details also in turquoise. The hair is black and nothing screaming for attention. So we have a resting place for the eye on the face and then we can explore from there. So I give the composition a strong eight. I would have played on that a lot more. So I would have made everything that's going downwards a lot darker. And then I'm a bit unsure about some of the color choices. It's a small detail, but the purple on the roses just throws me off. I can't say why, but, but for some reason it doesn't work. So if we look at the execution, I really, again, like the clothing over her face. It's really nicely executed, but a lot of the other parts are mainly edge highlighted. And I'm not 100% sure if that works. Also the execution somehow is uh, grainy and chalky on some of these areas. And the hair on the Benjis, for example, there is no real shading on there. There's just a, a highlight, but you kind of need to go really dark on these in-between parts and just overall there is a bit too much of edge highlighting going on or just edge highlighting and then for example the book uh, looks unfinished i guess just a black wash would have helped there so there's really large inconsistencies there and then there is some parts that are not really distinguished from each other like uh, the embroidery that is sculpted at the top of her dress it almost looks like you left them white and then as you painted the, the turquoise on, you touched some of that white and then it's not touched up and there is no definition between that. So there's no panel lining there to create some shadow and distinction. And it kind of drags down areas that are really nicely painted. For example, the hourglass. I give the execution a six. And as far as the palette goes, um, I like the interaction of the colors. Like I said initially, I, I would have picked something else for the roses. Maybe some of that red um, brown color that you have in the staff and the, the thorn crown could have worked so that it just continues downwards. I would have not introduced another color that the purple is. It's just an additional color that not doesn't necessarily have a reason to be there. So I went for a seven on the palette. Overall, really nice, just minor things that throw me off. Okay, Mr. Spider-Man. I gave the composition a seven, simply because uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's also not super intriguing. So I like the river of uh, poison that's running in between his legs and how he's kind of towering over it. As far as the execution goes, I give this a four. And my reason for it is that it's mainly dry brushed and again there's nothing wrong with dry brushing but i'm not 100 percent sure if there was a plan behind the dry brushing the main body is just dry brushed in the same way so there's a bit of a light on the front i want to say that's maybe coming from the blades but i would have also liked to see uh, more lights on the shoulders on the forehead and on the claws on the back additionally there's some edge highlights on these claws that are just white there's no transition between um, the red and the white 
It makes everything just look unfinished and rough. And then some parts of the back are just plain black and I get that uh, you want to do something with the runes, but in my opinion, it just looks too plain and I would have at least tried to pick out some of the, the additional details in black. Overall, I would just try moving away from dry brushing, try to paint with a brush. And again, I'm not trying to talk anyone down, but if it's a painting competition, try to move into painting approaches that really show that you have more control over the paint. As far as the palette goes, I think the colors can work nicely together. So I give it a solid six. Again, I would have just liked to see you do more with it and add variation to these colors that you picked out. Okay, this is the stuff nightmares are made of. So that's a really nice composition. The wings and the tentacles are kept dark and create a bit of an outline with just minimal highlighting. And the tension is really drawn to the main body of this thing. <laughs> the wings still are there and they create this atmosphere and surrounding of, of um, yeah, horror that's kind of engulfing you. And then again, the focus is on the main body and everything's super desaturated and then just the centerpiece has a bit of color in there. So that's a super nice composition and I give it a nine. If we go to the execution, maybe to compare it to uh, before, if we look at the tentacles, it's maybe even dry brushed. It's probably not because if we look at the purples, uh, you can see highlighting and layers and a bit of an inconsistency there. But the black is done really nicely, could have been dry brushed, right? But there is uh, areas that are brighter and then as it curves down and gets darker again, so there's variation in there. And this is what I would have looked for in the piece before, for example. So again, really nice. I give it an eight simply because I want to save um, nines and tens for stuff that is beyond solid, uh, that is spectacular, right? Color choice again, really nice. The purple, the beige and the black all are really subtle and only as we go in, the, the beige starts to stand out a bit more. And of course the red stands out. So the palette is really solid and I give it a nine. So intermediate multiple figures or dioramas. The first one is really appealing. It could be, in my opinion, a piece out of an art gallery. So I'm not 100% sure how this was composed. I want to say that uh, they tried to find animals that worked with the center figure and put it on the base and created this, um, it's not water, it's some kind of material floating around uh, the composition. And like how the, the white is standing out from the rest and it puts it against a dark black ground. So the composition here is really nice. I give it a nine. Again, I want to reserve 10 for something that's super spectacular. The execution was okay. I think it fits. And contrary to the main body, I feel like on the small animals, there has not been a plan, right? On the main figure, there is this upper area that is lit a lot more. And then uh, as we go down, everything's getting a bit more muted and, and shaded. So give the execution a seven. And I also have one complaint as we go into the palette on the back. I'm not sure what's going on. There is this large shadow and I don't know where it's coming from. I tried to look through all the pictures and I'm not sure where the shadows are coming from. Let's put it that way. That dragged the palette down one point and I gave the palette an eight. So this is a really fun entry. I like it a lot. Uh, if I look at the individual pieces, I would say composition wise, everything gets dragged down a bit because it doesn't necessarily have a clear viewing angle. So the viewing angle from the front does not quite work because he's just standing too far back. If he was more to the front and overarching the small um, puppets a bit more, that would have worked a bit better in my opinion. It's a really nice concept. I still gave it a seven, but I feel like there could have been more compositional wise. And I know that it's meant to be a stage, but the, the flat black of the base um, with the, the glossy black in the back, it's just throwing me off and I can't quite point my finger. As far as execution goes, if I look at the individual details, everything's executed neatly, but there's nothing really that stands out. Um, no real, no extreme contrasts where, for example, he's lit from above. There's clearly a spotlight on, on the top 
and none of the the pinheads have this huge interaction with the light that's coming from above, right? That would have been an opportunity to create a lot of contrast because there's so many different angles there. And I would have also made the back a lot brighter, but as it curves down, everything's kind of the same brightness. So that's a bit of a missed opportunity. I just realized they painted shadows. So that's a bit of a plus. But then as we look at the puppets, I'm a bit unsure if they are dark because they're standing outside of the cone of, of light, but they, they're they kind of flat. There's only some highlights on the top. So again, I'm not sure. The effect is just not strong enough for me to realize uh, whether or not uh, this is intended. There's a couple of inconsistencies with the highlights, for example, on the feathers. So I gave the execution a six and palette wise, it's kind of hard because obviously there's a lot of elements so it's a lot of colors, but the colors work together nicely. So I gave the palette an eight. On first sight, the zombie mother entry looks really intriguing. I think it's because the, the effect of the red dress against the green zombies, which obviously is a complementary contrast, is really interesting. I really like how the face stands out um, after the dress. So the first gaze gets drawn to the dress, then the face peeks out um, behind the mask and then your eye gets drawn to the zombies. I think it's really effective in that regard. And for that, I gave it a nine. I also think the base is big enough or rather small enough for the scene. So it's kind of condensed and not too drawn out. This is a good example for what I mean with trying to condensing your dioramas down a lot and not having any space that's not filled. So I think it's a well-deserved nine. As we go to the execution, I didn't quite find parts that didn't look good enough. If we look super close, there's a few inconsistencies, but for example, the, the dress looks nicely executed. There's a few inconsistencies, for example, on the mask. I almost feel like um, they got lost a bit there uh, on what to highlight. And then if we look at it from the backside, it becomes this dark, mass and nothing's really distinguished and personally i'm not a fan of that i know that if you're building a diorama then you want to focus on the front because that's the viewing angle and people have worn crystal brushes with miniatures that didn't have a backside painted but again i'm just not a fan of this and subjectively i'm giving this a minus point because of that still an eight for the palette and execution so pretty solid entry so this one is a diorama and I'll be honest, I'm getting super bored of the old orange and, and blue uh, light sources. So one really bright, warm OSL source and the rest being kind of blue. And I'm thinking it has been proliferated a lot by some people making YouTube videos about it. Still gonna try to judge this objectively. And as far as the composition goes, I have again, a bit of a problem with viewing angles. I would have probably preferred if we can see both our protagonists from the front. So if both were facing a bit to the front, I know that uh, you went for them facing each other and it looks like the reasonable choice. But again, I'm a viewer. I want to see what's going on in one glance and one glance. Could argue that it just needs to be turned around so you can see the face of the ghoul coming out of the earth and then you turn around and you see her uh, and there's a couple of shots that you can make and create that make for interesting views. But personally, again, if I'm looking at a diorama, I want to see what's going on with one shot. So I give the composition a seven. The execution, nothing's really wrong there, but it's also not super spectacular, right? I, I saw this a million times already executed in the same way. I think the shadows work nicely. They are placed correctly. It creates a nice atmosphere. I don't know where this fits. It doesn't necessarily fit into palette or execution, but I just would like to have a bit more of a terminator in some areas. So a really dark dividing line between the blue and the, the red tones, the orange tones. You don't have that everywhere. So maybe look into the theory of how this light situation works once again. But yeah, uh, execution six, palette six. 
So this was something interesting. I'm not 100% sure if the base comes with the figures. I want to say they tried to do something with uh, texture, either cl cloth or cotton. I'm not 100% sure. I really like the composition as far as adding this, you know, dark clouds representing like dark thoughts or dark dreams or you know, just being in a dream sphere. I think works really well. I'm not 100% sure if the angle that uh, the figure is positioned behind her works. So overall, I gave it an eight. There's like two or three things that pull it down. As far as the execution goes, I almost feel like the person ran out of time a bit. I really like how, um, you know, the, the light plays on the hair. At the same time, I kind of dislike how there's minimal highlights on uh, the green cape. I feel like it's interesting to have the creature blend into the background and have it rather dark. But on some of the close-ups, it feels like they ran out of time. So I went for a seven on the execution. As far as the palette goes, it's it's neat. Uh, it's nothing spectacular. Like I'm not 100% sure about the skin tones. Some There's also this dividing line going on on her cheek that I can't really place and don't understand. Again, there's nothing wrong, but I'm just lacking that uh, spectacular um, factor that is drawing me in. For the advanced category, uh, the first entry we have is one of Miniac's Vampire Ladies. As far as composition goes, I rated this really high. We have our eyes drawn to the face. It's the brightest part of the mini. Maybe intensified by the drapes that she has just below her chin. We really get drawn in because the face really is the focus of the miniature. And then as we go down, we have the shine on the front that kind of draws us further down. And as we go further down, the line also goes through with the the free hands and the small details on her dress. And then further down, everything gets darker. So. Um, yeah, that's a really nice composition. And then we also have the sword being rather intense as an additional detail. The base also is highlighted, but it is not drawing too much attention. So overall, it's dark. It just has these accents. And I really like that. I gave the composition a nine. I feel like there could be something more spectacular still waiting. So a really solid nine. As for the execution, I also gave it a nine. Why did I not give a 10? I feel like there's some areas that could be improved. For example, I really like how smooth the free hands integrate with the the rest of the colors on the on the dress. But then you also have parts on the non-metallic gold, for example, where you can see the brush strokes a bit too much. And for a 10, I would like this to be just a tiny bit smoother, but overall, really great piece and really solid color choice. The purples, the turquoise, yeah, just works together really well. The non-metallic gold, the yellow non-metallic gold has a color tone that also fits both these colors. It's not too yellow. And the eyeshadow and the lipstick, everything works together really nicely. So I gave this a 10 as far as palette goes. So on this entry, I was a bit torn. The first impression is that there's something wrong with it. I would have probably expected this to be overall a bit darker. I know that this is a nighttime situation and the blue extends, you know, the, the shine from um, the moon extends over it and it's cast into this moonlight shadow. Moonlight shadow? It's cast into this moonlight. But everything else is just a tiny bit too chromatic for my taste. If you said, okay, there's a warm light coming from the front, I would have probably believed it. But the situation just would have called for more desaturated colors. So the warmth of the red hair just doesn't work for me. Also, the skin tones look really warm. There's just something wrong with color choice here. I also have a bit of a problem with all of the wood coming up to to his chest. I know what you try to do. You try to integrate this or make this look like it's part or, or he's coming out of the woods. But I feel like the back part where you have uh, twigs surrounding, you know, the, the drawn trees is enough to do that. Below his uh, chest, I would have maybe just like the plain plinth that's not interfering with the composition. And I'm not 100% sure about all of the scratches. I like the way that it looks on his forearm. I don't necessarily like how it looks up on his shoulder. So sometimes it looks interesting. Sometimes it looks like uh, not super credible. So it's again, it's just small details. And I gave this an eight composition wise. 
execution wise and also for the palette. So this Chucky, I'll make it quick. I give the composition a nine. I like how it looks like it's actually running around on a piece of furniture. Uh, and I think they built the base. I also like the small detail with the, the Ouija board in the back. I wanted to give this a 9.5 as far as comp composition goes, but there is no 9.5, so it's a nine. As far as execution goes, there's a few inconsistencies in the paint, nothing that looks really off. But for example, on the hand that's coming to the front, uh, there's a rougher blending and some of the line work uh, up here on the strap is kind of inconsistent. And in general, the blends could have been slightly more uh, refined and especially compared to all of the other entries that were in this category. So the execution gets a seven and the palette gets a nine. It's really credible. So all the colors work together. I think it's relatively set on how Chucky looks. The red wood around it complements everything and just works together nicely. The next entry is really crazy. I call it a murder of puppets. And everything around this entry is really amazing down to how they took a picture. They clearly have uh, that eye for a composition. The intense lights coming out of his eyes and the way that shadow interacts with light. Everything's just, just amazing here. So the composition is a clear 10. I don't think there's anything to argue about. I give the execution a nine simply because there's a few areas, for example, on the back, the faces look kind of rough. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of contrast involved there. So going from really dark to really bright in a very small area and where light meets shadows, there is just a, that tiny bit of potential to be even smoother. And I know I'm a bit nitpicky here, but I would have probably just given all tens if I wasn't nitpicky in this area, because I also give the palette a 10 and I think it's obvious why. So the last entry, and again, as far as composition goes, I'm not a fan of these bases that almost integrate with the body because to me, it looks like, you know, he's a floating uh, torso on a piece of terrain. The plinth itself is amazing. If we look at it from above, it's really nice with all the details and how it integrates with the actual plinth. All of that is really nice. I'm just not really a fan of it. So I gave the overall composition an eight and I know I'm nitpicky here, but that's just how I see it. As far as the execution goes, I'd want to do a 9.5. There's only very few areas where there's uh, inconsistencies. Everything's rather smooth. There's just a few parts where you can see line and brushwork that I know that they could have tried to get rid of with a tiny bit more time investment. I really like how the eyes look. Overall, I would also like to give a 9.5. I can only give a nine, but I compensated for the palette. I would also want to give it a 9.5. So I gave it a 10 here. So it evens out because I really like the colors, how the colors are composed from the blue shine here, uh, bluish purple shine here over the skin tones. So there's a lot of varieties in here from reds uh, over turquoises, dark, dark blues to skin tones, various skin tones. I like how the yellow of the iris of the eye complements the rest. And I think the execution and the palette category evening out as nine and 10. So both are 9.5 are fair here. Okay, last chance to edit your response. And uh, yes, we want to be a judge again. Hopefully they're going to have us still. Hopefully no one's killing me because of the feedback that I gave. Let's send this and we're done. So let me know in the comments whether or not you agree with my choices and my feedback. And if you want to, you can see similar videos to this where I give feedback to my viewers on my channel and you can get feedback yourself by joining the Patreon at any level, by joining the YouTube members at any level, or by subscribing on Twitch, because that gives you access to my Discord server and access to the feedback channel, where you can post your finished miniatures and ask me for what you could do better. If that's interesting to you, check out all the links in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.